Hello, I'm Oreo. Long time to see. Thank you for waiting me. Last time, we looped the switches and fixed it to the plate. So, in this time, we will solder these fixed switches. Before we start, please subscribe me and like this video. It is big help for me. Let me show you something. As I told you simply in the first episode, keyboards recognize key press with the matrix system. The matrix wiring is a method of efficiently using the controller pins by connecting switches in a grid format. I plan to put normal wires in the column so that the signal could pass through the TNZ2 well. Then I plan to solder diodes on the rows. This wiring allows the signal from the column wire to flow to TNZ2. The 1 and 4148 diodes only allows current to flow in this black direction. So when the signal flows into the column, it's input by judging which rows the signal comes in. First of all, you need to do some basic work before wiring. First, shape the diodes to be attached to the row. The diode is connected to the left pin of the switch, so to make soldering easier, bend the orange part of the pin to insert it around the switch pin like this. You have to make a shape only in this direction. If the diode is placed in the other direction, it will not work. There will be one diode for each key. I bought 100 diodes and I bent 80 diodes. If you have bent all the diodes like this, you need to cut off this leg. Bend the other side in an L shape. Before soldering, it is convenient to make kind of map of how to wire the keyboard. I made a map of the wiring surface seen above and the reversed wiring surface we can see when soldering. It does not matter in the case of row lines, but in the case of column lines, it is convenient to make them because they are often confused. Now put these diodes on the left pin of every switch like this. After putting it on, we finally start soldering. Solder the wires to each diode row and connect it to the TNZ2 board. At this time, it is important to write down each row is connected to which pin. When you're programming later, if you don't remember which pin each row is connected to, it can cause problems. And then I solder the column lines. Each column is connected with a wrapping wire. The reason for using the wrapping wire is that the sheath can be melted when a soldering iron so it is more convenient to solder it. Solder the wires connecting each column to the TNZ2 board. It's also a good idea to write down each wires or solder to which pin. After that, 
fix the TZ board well and test whether the housing assembly is working properly. I soldered diodes and wires on the keyboard like this, and connected pins like this. We will now put the default firmware on the keyboard. This can be done on the website without any additional programming being used. First, go to the keyboardlayouteditor.com where the keyboard layout was made and copy the raw data. Then, go to kbfirmware.com and paste the raw data. The first thing we need to do is go to the wiring tab and set each switch is connected to which rows and columns. If you press the flip button, the switches are arranged in reverse, like when soldering, so it will be more convenient when working. I set it like this. The next thing to do is set the pin. Go to the pins tab and select the driver that is in your controller. In rows, you need to set each of the diode lines is connected to which controller pin. In columns, set each column wire line is connected to which pin. It's an easy step now. If you've ever made a custom keyboard, you probably know this. Go to the key map tab and map the keys you want. Key mapping is to set which character is input when each switch is pressed. You can freely set each key. Click the location for each key, then click the desired input in the selection tab below. QMK supports the layer function. Layer 0 is an array that is usually executed when the switch is pressed and layer 1, 2, 3 is an array that works temporarily when the keys FN1, 2, 3 are pressed. In the macro tab, you can create macros with an action record function etc. You can go back to keymap tab and map it to M0123. There is no need to touch the quantum tab. Enter your layout name in settings. If you want to continue working later to save configuration and get the JSON file, and press this button to load it again at the start of the next work. Finally, go to the compile tab and you can download the hex file and the zip source file. Download the hex file that can be put in the controller board here. Afterwards, I used the Teensy controller, so I need to put the hex file inside the Teensy board. If you search for Teensy tool loader on Google, you can download the program made by PJRC. Click the text below the picture to download it. If you made it using a different controller, you need to use a different program. Please be careful. After downloading this program, connect it with Teensy board. Also, you have to press a button to connect. Click the button above to load the hex file and program it on the Teensy board. Then, test it. Luckily, on the first try, all keys worked without errors, in my case. In today's video, we solder diodes and wires, connect them to the controller, and install the firmware. It took me a long time to make a video, starting with less than 100 subscribers, and now I reach it 140. In fact, I was worried that I wouldn't be able to complete the video until Christmas, but Fortunately, I did it. The next video will be the Q&A notice video and I will upload the fourth episode of the Handwire Keyboard Project about Rotary Encoder after that. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe me and leave a like and comments. Thank you for waiting and watching this video.